what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of trading my live account today is day number 24 july 13 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it first thing we need to talk about as we come into today's session we need to talk about the news that came out this morning because just like yesterday when we had news at 8 30 we also had the same thing happen today at 8 30 so let's get into that now yesterday we had cpi come out that's consumer price index that gives you the overall change in inflation for the consumer but today we had ppi come out which is producers price index and that tells you the overall change in inflation for the producer so the change in the price of finished goods and services sold by producers so because inflation is such an important macroeconomic topic it's going to make a big deal whenever any type of inflation related news is released now cpi is really major ppi is important too but not as impactful as cpi would be and that's the reason why today we had a reaction but we didn't have like a huge reaction we spiked to the downside we spiked to the upside and then that was pretty much it we saw the movement we saw the real action happen after that news event initially came out so before we get into any uh price action analysis let's let's discuss all of these levels that we have on the chart since we have a little bit more than usual so all of the green lines that you see on the chart those represent the zones that i've had drawn from the pre-market that i just extended overall into today's uh actual opening bell session so this is the upper level zone at the top these two green lines these two green lines down at the bottom represent the lower zone that i use also now each one of these blue lines represents a level of support that i drew after the fact after the zones were already established and these levels of support were actually levels that I use throughout the day also and also throughout the pre-market as well. Now, what I want to talk about before we get into uh, price action analysis, let's just talk about the overall, I would guess, I guess you could say the bigger picture for this entire chart. Like if you just look at this screenshot and look at what you see, we notice that we have two zones, right? And we're pretty much trading around those zones and within those zones back and forth, back and forth. Now we have some price action where we went above the zone but eventually we found a way to come back now when i look at days like this i like to call these days zone to zone days where the market it might trend but it's going to trend for a while and then the trend is going to change and then it's going to come back down to a zone that it used to be inside of so i like to call that zone to zone days and this is a day from june 3rd 2022 and this is actually something i used this morning to kind of help me get ready for today's market session because once i have my zones drawn in today on today's chart in real time i was like oh okay i have a, a understanding of what i'm looking at so let me go back and compare my notes now one of the biggest problems that i have as a trader for a zone to zone day is let's say the trend is up whenever prices come back to retest that upper zone i try and go long at that lower level of the upper zone and expectation that the uptrend is going to continue and eventually come back to retest the top level of the upper zone and usually that does end up happening but the only thing is it's usually going to pull back more than likely at that top level pull back and then it's going to make its way up back to retest the upper level of the upper zone so that's pretty much the the mindset that i went into today and i was like look Todd, whatever you do do not go long from higher prices at that upper zone level until you see a pullback first. So when we come back to today's chart, that actually helped prevent me from taking the long trade right here as prices came back up into the bottom level of that upper zone. Notice how it's almost an exact carbon copy of what we saw on June 3rd, 2022, uh, when prices came back up, retested the zone right here, they pulled back. So when we look at today's chart, prices, they did break past that lower level zone, came back past two levels of support. But eventually from that point forward, we had nine straight candles that brought us all the way back up to that lower level of the upper zone. Now, notice how eventually prices did come back to retest that top level. But look at what they did first. They had to pull back. So that's a, a big reason why I titled this video understanding market history is key that's important because if you understand what the market has done in similar scenarios before 
it gives you a very good footing to make decisions from in real time when you start to see that type of price action form again. And that's exactly what helped me today and helped me prevent and help prevent me from taking that loss that I would have took if I went long right here. So we had to pull back first and create our higher low. Now, once we created our higher low right here, we came back to retest it a second time. So that's telling me that for whatever reason, buyers find a lot of confidence going along at these levels down here, right around 34,600. And all of this is happening in the pre-market. So if it's happening in the pre-market, that's probably a good idea of what is going to come later on when the market opens. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But first, let's talk about trade one right here. So trade one, really, if we read the notes, let's say, let's see, I went long from low prices, from lower prices during the uptrend after seeing multiple higher lows get formed. And that's pretty much my bread and butter when it comes to trading a higher low. I want to see an uptrend, possibly, if I'm not trading the first higher low. If I'm trading the first one, I don't need to see an uptrend, but after that first higher low, I confirm that the uptrend is on and then if I want to trade higher lows after that that's what I mean when I say I want to see multiple uh, higher lows get formed before I get in so once I saw this higher low get formed right here all I did was circle it up what I like to do is I draw a level of support on the lows for that candle and I use that as a reference point to look for potential long trades as prices come back into that level of support so let's actually zoom in because one thing I learned today was that even though your higher low might be small and it might be a little bitty candle, tiny candle like this one, you can still use it and it can still be useful to you if it aligns with the overall market trend. And that was definitely the case today because we already had a higher low get formed uh, maybe about five to ten minutes earlier. So once I saw this one get formed, I'm like, OK, I see what's going on. And then as soon as prices came back to retest it a couple of candles later. I went long right here. I was trying to take prices all the way back up to the top of the zone. But once I saw prices kind of stall out right here, I'm like, eh. it is the pre-market. So in a scenario like that, volatility is usually a little bit lighter than it would be once the market opens. So if you got close enough to your profit target where you feel satisfied, you don't have to hold out for those last couple of points. You can just take your profit right there. And that's what I ended up doing on trade one. And I actually feel like I made a good decision right there, because if you look, that was actually the top of that entire swing that we started coming back from this low right here at around five hundred and seventy five earlier this morning in the market. So I think I, I traded trade one as best as I possibly could based on what the market was giving me at that point. Now, after trade one in between that time, between trade one and the market opening over here at nine thirty. It wasn't too much that happened. All we did was come back, retest the top of the upper zone, come back to retest the top level of the lower zone. And then we just pretty, pretty much created uh, another consolidation zone in between the support level that we drew from that higher low from trade number one. And then the uh, bottom level, the bottom level of the upper zone. We just pretty much traded within that, within that. Then the market opened at 930. We came back to retest that original higher low that we established from that first initial reversal of the downtrend. So whenever you're in an uptrend and you see prices come back and retest the first higher low after the downtrend was over and you still find prices being able to bounce back off of that level, that tells you that the market is very strong to the upside and that you're finding a lot more buyers in the market than sellers. Because think about this. If prices were able to come all the way back up to the top of the zone and then come back down again, what would stop the sellers from being able to keep that momentum going? The only thing that could stop the sellers would be either sellers are taking profit or buyers are coming in and going long. Usually it's a combination of both of those things, because if you were selling more than likely, you would probably look to get out down here. And if you were going long, you would probably look to get in right here. So this is a very important pivot point. And when you see prices come back to retest that higher low and find support, that just gives you more confirmation about the overall uptrend and how strong it could possibly be. So we had that initial touch of the zone at 930. From that point forward, we shot up all the way past that upper level from that upper zone, created the swing high for today at 34,000. I want to say 
678, somewhere around that level. And then we pulled all the way back to retest the bottom level of the upper zone. Now, what I find very interesting right here is that even though we see prices have this large spike to the downside, we never created a lower high. So let's actually zoom in a little bit. So I was actually looking for a lower high because I'm like, OK, I see how prices just move. More than likely, we should see a lower high and then we can establish our bear trend line and use that as a reference point to go short from. Now, they almost established that lower high right here. Almost. If this candle would have closed green, I would have considered that one a lower high. But since it closed red, I just looked at it more so as a continuous bear spike where you have multiple candles to the downside that are all red and none of them give you an opportunity to establish a lower high or a swing low. None of them. Well, a lower high or a swing high. None of them give you the opportunity to be able to do that because they could have closed in the green, but it was enough sellers that continue pushing the market down. So to me, I just look at that as a spike to the downside. And even though you have a spike to the downside at the upper level of a trend, you still got to trade in line with the overall trend, despite that spike that you just saw. And the only reason I say that is because you don't have a lower high that gets formed. If it's not a lower high, no matter how weird it might feel, you got to still believe in the overall uptrend. So when prices came back to the bottom of the zone right here and created this swing high, well, excuse me, this swing low, I call it a swing low and a higher low because we touched off of the zone. We close significantly away from the lows of this candle. And then on the very next candle, look at look at this. On candle two, right? We close right here. On the next candle, we open right here. So it was pretty much a gap to the upside on a one minute chart, which tells you that buyers are very strong. So I'm like, okay, that's definitely a higher low. The overall trend is up. We established that from these lows that we made right after the sell off from the initial news release of ppi coming out at 8 30. so we know that the uptrend is up we had a very strong higher low get formed so i'm like okay we had a higher low we almost made a fake lower high but since we didn't i'm still looking to go long because this is one of my favorite setups actually where you see prices come back retest that level of support and then go long so let's actually go to an example that i saw from now this was from april 13 2023 this year PPI came out on April 13th this day as well. And look at the similar price action that we saw. We saw prices kind of trending lower, trending lower, trending lower. We see our higher low get formed and then we see our prices move up. So in today's scenario, this didn't occur. This trade didn't occur at the bottom like it did on trade one. It occurred a little bit further up in the uptrend, but you can still trade higher lows that come later on as the uptrend starts to mature a little bit. Just be aware that eventually the trend is going to be over. So you want to make sure that you don't get caught up in that last move. Maybe you can catch the second to last up trade, long trade, but you don't want to catch that last one. But nonetheless, you can trade higher lows from higher prices. And that's exactly what I kind of saw on trade two today. And I think this example right here from the past, this was from May 24th this year. I think this is a perfect example of trading with the trend even though the trend might be starting to lose momentum so let's analyze this chart real quick we notice that we have higher highs higher lows so we have an uptrend that's established and then we see prices come back to retest that higher low right there we don't have the support level drawn but if we did we would have multiple retouches we would have a retest right here right here right here and right here right here and right here as well so about six retouches right there in that area and then they continued on to give you retouch number seven where we have this uh, annotation drawn up. So let's start from here. We move all the way up. We already know that the uptrend is solid. But then we have this long tail candle wick on extremely high volume. That's showing us exhaustion, which means that everyone who wants to go long, they already have. So if there's no more buyers in the market, well, it's only sellers. So more than likely, it isn't too long before the market starts to roll over. But how long the market takes to roll over can be a very important factor because if it takes a longer time to roll over, you can still catch those last couple of up trades. Now, if it's a quick rollover, like something like this, where prices don't hesitate, they just go straight down. 
Well, that'll be a different scenario. You won't be able to take your long trades uh, when you see price action like that. But in today's scenario, when we compare this to what we saw today, yeah, we saw the uptrend starting to lose steam. But when prices came back to retest that level of support from that higher low, we could still catch that scalp trade to the upside. And you could actually do that on multiple occasions on this day from May 24th this year. And you could do that one time, two times, maybe even the third time right here if you caught it the right way. And you could get those last three up trades before the trend finally rolls over and continues moving down. So that's actually very similar to what we saw today. Yeah, we saw prices starting to weaken up a little bit during the uptrend. But we still got to trade in line with the trend until we see that confirmation that the uptrend has ended and that it has rolling over. So after trade two, notice how I got out. Maybe I was lucky a little bit because I got out right here at the top of the swing. But I have a lot of trades like that. And when you read the market the right way, sometimes you just get out like that. It was just like that on trade one also. But after trade two, we do see that bear trend line actually hold up and become valid because prices were never able to come back and get past that level. So we see prices come back, retest the bottom of the zone, yes. Then eventually they created a higher low after they broke out of the zone, broke past the bear trend line and continued back up to retest this level. Now, what's important is what happened after that retest. So prices come back up, retested right here. They didn't they weren't able to get past this level for the rest of the day. This actually, well, for the rest of the day up until me recording this video it's like i don't know let me see it's 11 39 right now in the morning so up until this point they haven't been able to break past that level what actually happened was they found resistance at this level and ended up moving all the way back down through the zone back down to retest this level of support that they initially started to up move from so when i talk about zone to zone days that's exactly the characteristics that you see in the zone to zone day where you think that oh okay we broke above the zone the uptrend is continuing no 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 we're just going back up to the upper levels of today's trading range and then we're probably going to go back down to the bottom levels of today's trading range so let's actually take a look at the live chart to see what happened since i took that screenshot so all right so this is the re resistance level i was talking about we came back up here they tried to break past that level multiple times but were never able to do it and then the market finally rolled over so notice how long this rollover took from the initial time that it started this right here is 10 36 when the the selling really picked up we saw initial signs for the selling starting to pick up way over here at 9 32 and then didn't happen for another entire hour. So imagine if you was trying to force the short trade for that entire hour, you would have got burned a lot of times if you were not shorting from higher prices and being disciplined with your entry. So on a zone to zone day, always keep that in mind. It may seem like the trend is gonna continue, but if you got those zone to zone characteristics, more than likely you're gonna stay within that bigger range for that day. And that's exactly what happened today. We almost tried to break past that zone, but we came right back down to retest that lower zone again. And then eventually today we came back to retest that closing price from yesterday at around thirty four thousand five hundred and sixty three. So it'll be interesting to see where the market goes from here. But I just wanted to come back and just establish that point to tell you guys that in the zone to zone day, don't expect for the trend to be extended there will be opportunities for a trend to happen like on this day in particular we had multiple trends we had an uptrend right here right then we came back we had a downtrend right here and then from that point forward we had a little micro uptrend back up to retest the top of the zone and then the downtrend continued once more so when it comes to a zone to zone day you'll have plenty of opportunities on both the long side and the short side you just don't want to get too caught up and too committed and you don't want to think that that trend is going to continue more than likely on the zone to zone day that trend is going to last but then it's abruptly going to come to a halt and you need to make sure that you're aware of that so you don't try and hold it like you would on a day like maybe a couple of days ago where 
the market just shot straight up and kept going and kept going and kept going. It's not like that every day. Every day has its own characteristics. So that's pretty much the biggest takeaways that I got from today. Biggest takeaway was, man, you got to understand what happened in the past in order to help yourself in the future. Because let's say I didn't look at my notes and look at a day like today. I would have been all over the place because if you look at this price action, yeah, I was able to break it down and make sense of it. But to the naked eye, man, this looks ridiculous. I'm like, if you had no uh no levels up here, you would be like, what in the world is going on right now? So you always got to remember that nothing is easy in the market. You got to study and understand what you're looking at if you want to be successful in the future. So overall, I would say today was a good day. Today is an example of how I want to trade and how I want to be as a trader. I want to come in. I want to take setups that I know that I've known from the notes that I've studied, trades that I know from the practice that I've done and trades that I feel 100 percent comfortable taking because I understand how they work and I understand the characteristics. So I think that's the biggest takeaway I got. Just if you want to be the best trader, you can be stick to your setups and always be a student of the game. Don't stop studying. Don't stop working because you need to continuously study and get better if you want to continue making good trades in the market. So I would say that going into tonight's back testing session, my goal is to just I still want to focus on not taking bonehead trades because, yeah, today was a good day. But if we go back and look at some of the trades from these past trade reviews that I've been putting up over these past couple of weeks, the biggest factor is not the good trades that I take, but it's the subpar trades that I take. And that comes back to only taking setups that you're comfortable with, that you know that you've seen in your notes and you're like oh i know what this is so that's my biggest focus uh that's my biggest focus going into tonight's back testing session but that's pretty much all i got today man i learned a lot and you know today was a a very intense study session so i hope you guys learned something too i'll be back tomorrow july 14th but until then you guys take it easy